Hi and welcome to Leitrim Daily. My name is Brett Finnerly and you're listening to the Sports Preview Show here on Leitrim Daily Podcast. It's episode 155 of the show. Today we're going to be talking about the three main sports, Gaelic, rugby and soccer over the coming weekend action in all three codes as well as a look at some of the participation events taking place across the county with Patricia Ford of the local sports partnership specifically the operation transformation walks taking place next weekend the 18th and the 19th across the county now in Gaelic games I'm going to be joined by Gary Donoghue and we're going to talk about two games this weekend as the county team's really starting to gear back up into action. The FBD semi-final takes place on Sunday afternoon at 2pm in Avant-Garde Park, Sean McDermott, and that is Leitrim versus Roscommon on sal- Sunday afternoon, while on Saturday afternoon at 12 noon in Pierce Park in Longford, we take on the home side in the under-20 Philly McGuinness Cup. That, of course, will be played before the O'Byrne Cup clash of Longford and Dublin, so... A nice opportunity for our young lads to get a look up close and personal at some of the up-and-coming Dublin players in the next 12 months or so. Both Leitrim teams will be struggling for numbers because of unavailability for Sigerson Cup commitments and as well as the stag of one of the players. Uh, amazing letting players actually be human for a change and go off and have a social life. So a few lads missing this weekend and it will be a tough task for both teams, both a little bit depleted because of those 10 or so players missing from action. That being said, it does give a chance to lads to put their hand up and really put their name in the hat for a jersey at the start of the National League in two weeks' time. Now, in soccer, we have two big games in the county this weekend. In the Saigalitum Super League, Manor Rangers face the trip to Carberry, top of the table Carberry, in a top of the table clash, one that really Manor must win if their hopes of winning the Super League are to stay alive for the rest of this season. We'll be talking to Thomas McDonald, their player manager, about their hopes going into that particular fixture. While in the Premier League, the second division of the Sligo Leitrim and District League, Carrick Town are also away. They make the trip to Kulani for their game on Sunday morning, also an 11 a.m. kickoff. In terms of rugby, Sligo are in action tomorrow afternoon in the All Ireland League Division 2B. They take a trip to Ballina to play the home side there, who are struggling in that division. Sligo will be looking to get back to winning ways and take all four points and maybe even a bonus point home from their trip to Ballina. In the Junior Cup on Sunday, Ballinrobe is the venue for Carrick as they travel to Ballinrobe for 2pm on Sunday afternoon for their last 16 clash in the Connacht Junior Cup. While Sligo also in action, they tra- travel to Buccaneers in Athlone and they play at 2pm also in Dubarry Park. Now, I did mention Patricia Ford earlier in the show and we will be talking to Patricia later on in the programme about all the work that's going on at the moment within the local sports partnership, all of the participation programmes and none more so important than the Operation Transformation Walks taking place in Manor Hamilton, Balnamore and Carrick and Shannon tomorrow week the 18th. There is also a fourth event in Drumahair on the Sunday afternoon. Those all start at 11 a.m., on Saturday the 18th, but Patricia will tell us more about that later on in the program. I'll also be giving you information on our new Sports Person of the Month award that we're going to be giving out from Leitrim Daily here. There'll be details of who's going to be sponsoring it and also who the first nominees are after the first week of the year. We'll catch up with that later on in the program, but first we're going to take a look at the Gaelic Games. And earlier in the week, I caught up with Gary Donoghue ahead of these two fixtures this weekend. Now Gaelic Games back in action in a major way this weekend with the FBD semi-final taking place on a Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock in Avoncard Park, Sean McDermott. But before that takes place, Leitrim are in action in the under-20 competition, the Philly McGuinness Cup, named obviously after that great Mohal and Leitrim stalwart who unfortunately passed away while playing a game back in Anna Duff for his club many, many years ago. Um we're joined by the manager, the de facto manager of the Leitrim Under 20s, Gary Donohue. Gary, welcome to the programme. Thanks very much. Now, you're in action on Saturday afternoon. You're playing Longford as a curtain raiser for Longford versus the Dubs in the O'Byrne Cup. Um, it's a pretty big stage. 
how are the lads looking forward to it? I'd, I'd say now they're looking forward to it a lot. Um, it's a good experience for these people to get in around and close to the dubs, and particularly the dubs who have won five in a row. They've changed the manager. There's a buzz around there. They'll probably be missing a lot of their stars, but at the same time, though, it's Dublin, and Dublin have a lot of good players, and, and you get up close and personal with these people. Um, so it's a lot to look forward to, but we have to look after our game first beforehand. Like, but for afterwards, it'll be it'll be good to be among that. Um, it'll be nice to get a performance out of our people too when there are going to be a crowd there but we'll just have to wait and see for that Let's rewind a little bit to last weekend first we'll get that out of the way first of all it was a tough day at the office in Fermanagh in Tempo last Saturday afternoon uh, two red cards a fairly heavy defeat albeit to a, a strong Fermanagh side backbone by that uh, Hogan Cup winning team from St Michael's and Enniskillen a bit of a, a learning experience for the boys it is, and for many of these lads, they probably haven't played county football before, so it's a big step up. Quite a few of them don't play with their colleges either. Um, so you're coming into this with, with very little preparation done as regards match time experience. Again, players who've played at a, at a higher level, as you, as you said there. But at the same time, though, was, it was about giving a lot of people game time and... We did that, and we do the same again next Saturday because we, these fellas have to start somewhere, and we have to start to look at them somewhere. So it is a competitive game. You know, we played one or two challenge games, but it is this is competitive. Um, as as we saw at the end of the game, it spilled over a little bit, but that nothing there was nothing much in it with the two red, three red cards. But you know, you take that and you move on. But um, yeah, it is a tough day on the, on the scoreboard, but. You know, until we get a lot of the underlying factors and key performance things better than that, and people realise that's where we're going and have to get to, there will be scoreboards like that. So hopefully, you know, we learn from that and we learn from our mistakes and the key mistakes and, and get the fundamentals right going forward. As you mentioned, this is very much a development competition a month out from the start of the championship or five weeks out from the start of the championship. What are you looking for this weekend from the players in terms of seeing who maybe has that hand up for a jersey when it comes round to the 15th of February? We're looking for people who have a good attitude or people who are prepared to uh, to try hard and work hard for the, for the team and, and keep going because... Even the other day, the scoreboard is going against us, but we still had people out there who were ambitious for themselves and ambitious for the team. And the basics might be right, the first touch might be right, the fitness might be right, but those things can be fixed. But you're looking for people with a good attitude first. It's easy to go into that game and say, well, we're missing a lot of players. So it doesn't matter enough. But every game matters when you put on a jersey, and particularly when you put on a county jersey. So it's it's people with a good attitude who, who are prepared to work hard regardless of what way the scoreboard is going. In terms of those people missing, as you mentioned, that's, I suppose, a knock-on effect of a couple of lads missing at senior level for Sunday's game. Uh, let's switch to that quickly for a minute. Tell us a bit about the preparations for Sunday's game. It's the FBD League semi-final. We're playing Roscommon, the old enemy. It's in Carrick, but yet, I suppose, with the lads away on stag weekends and, and other commitments, is it been taken nearly as kind of a, a warm-up with the league campaign being the main focus? You're obviously involved with that s- setup yourself. Yeah, no, any day you play Roscommon is an important day, and players know that and appreciate that. So, um, there's, there are people missing, obviously. There are people missing through the stag. There are people missing through Sigerson, which is a good sign for Leeds when you, when you have three lads involved in Sigerson. And then we have people out with injuries who, who won't be risked. The flu struck in the camp before Christmas too. There are people getting over that as well. So there are quite a few people missing, but it's still an opportunity for other people to who maybe weren't starters or weren't, aren't regulars to put, their, to put their hand up. Again, you're looking for a good attitude. Um, Roscommon will bring a good attitude, so we need a meeting with a good attitude too. Roscommon, of course, Connacht champions. Leitrim um, not, didn't really get going in the Connacht championship last year, although had a good one in the qualifiers after the fantastic league form. I suppose all eyes really are on that clash in Celtic Park in a couple of weeks, the first round of the league. Is that where the team and management are looking as well? Well, you look, you look at every week as it comes and every training session you go to, you're looking for something in it too. But it does start, the, the league is only a few weeks away. So, you know, if people with any sort of a niggle or that, you have to keep them back. If they're key, key players, you have to keep them back and make sure everything is fit, everyone is fit and fresh for that game. Um, but at the same time, though, the Roscommon game, it will be treated seriously, I'm sure. Once the game starts, everyone will be going for Roscommon and Leitrim. And in terms of the under-20s then... 
what kind of players are we looking at moving up to the senior squad over the, the weekend? Has that been decided yet? You know, what we do, we have, we have. There, there are four people involved with under twenties or with the seniors. Anyway, on that panel, um, and there are other people going to be tagging out the weekend. People who are who are showing up well, and people who who we feel may have a future in the county um, in the near future. We're not at that level of condition. The young lads are not at that level of conditioning. But this is an opportunity for we get them in up up close to to that level of condition and see what goes on, the speed of the game, the condition of the players the preparation so it's a win-win for those players who do get in there to have a look and see what goes on and hopefully it, it fires their ambition going forward that they will want to uh, they'll want to participate in that in the, in the near future too I suppose a couple of years ago the FBD did give Leitrim that bit of a springboard uh, when we won two back to back at the start of last decade uh, riding on from the Division 4 success of last year how likely are we to see a, a, an upset against the Connacht champions on Sunday? Well, Leitrim will be going into that game and trying to win the game. Like you know, regardless of who's missing, or who isn't, or who is there, it's an opportunity. And once the game starts, it's not about those who are who are missing or anything else, injured or otherwise. It's about getting a performance out of yourself and getting a performance out of the team. And you know, we'll take it minute by minute, and hopefully, you know, we can bring it down the final stretch of that game and and see where it takes us. You know, it'd be nice to get to a final in that, in that competition too. But it'd be nice to get, you know, a good performance that allowed that they can go into the league and look forward to the league confident. I suppose last season, the under-20s, bitterly unlucky not to beat Roscommon here in Park Sean uh, in the first round of the championship. This year, it's a bit earlier in the year, so you're looking at a Valentine's weekend, 15th of February clash against either Galway or Mayo. How are you happy with the, the way things are, are panning out for you at the moment? Well, you know, we could complain about the length of preparation time we have. We could complain about a lot of things, but, you know, we are where we are and we just have to move on. Again, it's about identifying players and getting them, getting the team in place for that game and giving it our best shot. Again, for players, we're looking for a good attitude, you know, in training beforehand, people who are buying into what we're going to try and do for this game and going forward. Um, the game, the competition comes around really quickly it's a bit unfair on players too because some people maybe are playing college football, fresher football and there's a lot of stuff thrown in at once. The, 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 obviously, the National League is on at the same time too. So it is a little bit unfair on, on younger players but they don't have a strong voice in the GA so you just have to get on with it. So, no, it, it, we'll be looking forward to the game. Any day you play in it with your county, whether it's under 20 or under 17 or senior, is a good day. So we have to put our best foot forward and get our preparation done properly between now and the game. Well, listen, Gary, thanks very much for joining us. The very best of luck to you and both sides, the under-20s and the seniors, both in action this weekend. The game on Saturday at 12 noon in Pierce Park in Longford as a curtain raiser for the dublin longford O'Byrne Cup game, while Sunday at 2 p.m. throw-in in Avoncard Park, Sean McDiarmid against the old enemy Ruscommon here in Carrick. It's the semi-final of the FBD League. Thanks very much, Gary, for joining me. The very best look at the weekend. Thank you. Now, on Monday's sports show, I did talk about the Sports Person of the Month Award that's going to be given out every month here on Leitrim Daily. We're going to have three different categories, local, national and international, where we have someone, obviously, of that standard in that given month. Now, we have today's first nominees, and how it's going to work is quite simple. Every week, we will pick people who have excelled on the playing pitches, and there will be nominations which will go in for a public vote at the end of the month for the Sports Person of the Month award in each of the three categories. Now, it will be the public vote will have an impact, but there will be an actual recorded conversation where the judges each month will pick who that Sports Person of the Month will be. So you'll actually get to hear the deliberations, and the deliberations will be put with the public vote to come up with the final answer. So it's very important that you support your chosen athlete but also it will not come down purely to the public vote although it will be obviously a huge consideration in the discussion at the end of each month now on a local level we have two nominations this week it's been very quiet in the first couple of weeks of the year obviously no Gaelic games on a local level back up and running yet and some of the local sports just beginning to get back into the swing of things post the Christmas break but the nominations for last weekend on a local basis both come from the town of Carrick and Shannon. One is Keith Crossan of Carrick Rugby for his last minute try which took a draw home from their game in the Connacht League last week 
while in soccer, Sean Hayden of Carrick Town was nominated after their performance last week in the Sligo Leitrim Premier League clash. On a national level, we have Breege Connolly after her Fields of Athenry 10k victory at the start of the year, while Matthew Early is nominated for his victory with Sligo Rugby in the Connacht Senior Cup to go with the Connacht Senior League victory they had earlier in the season. Killian Gaffey of Leitrim Under-20 Footballers was also nominated in the national section because of his performance against Fermanagh last weekend. They will be added to each week as the month progresses and at the start of February there will be a public vote, as we said, and a discussion on air about who will win that award. So everyone will be gone through in terms of the merits of their performances and then at the end of the month we will pick one person for the Sports Person of the Month Award. Please get in touch with us if you have somebody that is in your world, whether it's your club, your family, your community, or your teammate, who might be worthy of this nomination and of the ultimate award at the end of each month. We'll be picking one person in each category, as we said, and the nominations are available on our website. So just go to leitrimdaily.com and select the sports awards, and you will be able to make your nominations very simply through our website. Each week we go through the nominations and we'll pick out the people to put forward for the Athlete of the Month nomination. So that's this week's nominations, five in total across the two categories. No international performances just yet in the month, but hopefully that will change as the month progresses. Now in Sligo Leitrim soccer this weekend, Manor Rangers have a top of the table clash against league champions Carberry and they travel to Sligo to play Carberry at 11am kickoff on Sunday morning. I'm joined by the Manor Rangers manager, player manager, Thomas MacDonald. Thomas, welcome to the show. How's Bethany? How are you getting on? Thanks. I'm not too bad at all. Thomas, let's talk, before we talk about the game on Sunday morning, let's talk about the season so far. It's been relatively successful for you. You've, you've been doing pretty well towards the top of the table in the Super League. Yeah, we, we've uh, started off well. Um, I suppose at the beginning of the season, um, we've got uh, all the results we wanted. We started off with a, a 2-1 win away against St. John's and Sligo. And after that, we kind of we continued on. Um, so that leads us to where we are at the moment. And uh, every three points at this stage is massive to try and stay in touch with the, the boys at the top of the table. I suppose Sunday morning is a kind of a, a big, big game in terms of where the league is going to end up this year. Carberry are the defending champions. They've been the kingpins locally. They've done well in Connacht club competitions as well. How important is it to take a good result from that game on Sunday morning? Yeah, I suppose Sunday is um, will be our biggest game of the at the season at the moment because um, it's like a six pointer. If if you get the three points, you stay in touch with them, and if you lose, they'll pull up, they pull away from you. So it it is a massive game. It's, it's away from home, so. They will they will be strong and they'll have good support. But uh, yeah, we, we definitely have to get a result, if not uh, the three points out of that game. But but we know the challenge that's on our hands. Um, they are the the champions and they have been kingpins for many the season. Now you've got some decent performances this year, but you've been joined on the playing side of things by some pretty decent players. I've been watching Robbie Cunningham's progress over the last couple of months, and he seems to be banging in goals. I know he got four in one game earlier in the season. How important are, are players like that to the squad this year? Yeah, Robbie Cunningham has been a massive player for us. He's, uh, I think, he's on twelve goals, and I think Robbie's got them. 12 goals maybe in, in four or five games he wasn't available for us at the beginning of the season um, he was I don't know with college and other sports he, he was away and he, he joined the panel in, in October but some, since he's come back um, he has been banging in goals and he's definitely a man you, you want on the pitch How much of a challenge is it for a club like Manor Rangers to have all your players on the pitch in any given week because they do get dragged in a couple of different directions like you mentioned with college commitments work commitments and other sports yeah it, it is a challenge um, with college when the season starts at the beginning of September you do have three four maybe five lads 
away in Dublin or Galway traveling so they mightn't be available at the beginning then with other sports the last since I can remember Glen Carmanor are always strong and they're always challenging at the end of the championship season which means they're not available in, in September and maybe even October and then you do have other lads from Drumahair or or uh, Sligo teams that play in Championship 2 and might not be available. So what we do is we try to, this year anyway, we try to link in with the under-17 slash under-18 panel and uh, bring through a few young lads. And that's what we've been doing this year and they've proved to be um, great for the panel. Now, we did mention that you're a player manager of the team and you're talking about youth you've been around a couple of seasons now yourself how much playing are you doing versus been time on the sideline yeah this season um, I did start off the first game and I have played I have played a few games um, I suppose when you're managing it's harder to play as well um, you get a better view from what's happening on the sideline um, and there has been lots of occasions where I, where, because our panel is so strong that I can stand on the sideline and there's uh, great lads to come in and fill the positions. But um, yeah, also with a, with a wee bit of injury has held me on the sideline as well. And, you know, but all is, is coming along nicely now and hopefully get back on the pitch again very soon. I suppose while we have you, it's not directly related to, to Manor Rangers, but good positive news for a change coming out of the FAI this week with the appointment of three new independent directors. How much of an impact will that have on the grassroots of the sport and to teams and clubs like Manor Rangers? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's good news to hear. Um, just for the for teams like Manor Rangers, just uh, it, it, it's good news all around just to bring to bring it on for us and you know funding and for different little, little bits and pieces that can can improve our club and lots of other junior clubs as well so that, that's good news to hear yes excellent well listen Thomas I'm going to let you go because I know you're in a rush to go and, uh, and do the school run uh, thank you very much for having a chat with us the very best of luck on Sunday morning hopefully we'll be uh, singing about Manor Rangers victory on Sunday afternoon and Monday here on the channel thanks very much for joining me that's great, Bethany. Thanks, uh, thanks for talking to me. Now, it is a busy time of year, and one of the major events taking place in the next week or so in the county from a sporting context in terms of participation numbers is the Operation Transformation Walks. And we have a series of those happening across the county on the 18th and one spare one on the 19th of January. We're going to talk about that a little bit more with my next guest, who is... Patricia Ford from the Leitrim Sports Partnership. Patricia, happy new year. Welcome back to Thank you. work. Thank you. Yeah. It's a busy time of year for, for you all in the Sports Partnership. Yeah. Maybe we might start just with a little recap for people who aren't familiar with what the Sports Partnership is and what it does. Why have they not been listening to the show? We have covered you before, but just in case there's someone listening for the first time, can you tell us a little bit about what the Sports Partnership is and kind of in a, in a short enough way how it actually does its business? Yeah. So Leitrim Sports Partnership aims to get everybody in Leitrim as active as they possibly can. So we do that through loads of different ways. And as you mentioned, we have public events that we open up to everybody and we love the amount more people that come to them, the better. But we also run a lot of programs and events through groups and schools and um, active age groups that are just open to those groups. So there's loads of stuff happening in the background and as we said, there's lots of public events too. So we just try and get everyone as active as possible in whatever we can, whatever way we can. And of course, if there's a group like that in the county who aren't engaged with you, which is probably yeah. unlikely at this stage, you've been around 10 yeah. years or so and you're, yeah. you're very active and you're very busy, but if there's a group there, maybe a men's shed or something like that, that aren't, mm -hmm. feel it could maybe do something you can advise them or you can help them in that regard. Exactly, yeah, they're more than welcome to get in contact with us. But we hopefully, I'd like to think we know most groups at this stage, but yeah, they can get in contact and we can work with any group and try and help them get active. Perfect. Now let's talk about the specifics for the public face and individual events that are happening over the next couple of weeks. And it's not quite this weekend, but it is in the next couple of weeks and people don't need to get their head around it because it's going to require a little bit of work to get ready for it if you're not active at the moment. Yeah. The Operation Transformation Walks, tell us a bit about what's happening there. 
Yeah, so the Operation Transformation Walks, the show started uh, Wednesday evening on RTE, but the Nationwide Walk series has taken place on Saturday, the 18th of January at 11am, and we have organised three walks. So we have one in Ballamore, leaving from Ballamore Sports Complex. We also have one in Carrick and Shannon, leaving from Leitrim County Council offices, and in Manor Hamilton, leaving from the Bee Park Sports Hub and the Bee Park Community Centre. So they're all in good venues in the communities, and there's one spread in North kind of central and south Leitrim so I'd like to thank everyone that have the chance to be able to attend a walk and as I said they're on Saturday the 18th of January at 11am and on Sunday the 19th Drum Hare are also having a walk at 1pm in the Drum Hare Arts and Recreation Centre which was Drum Hare St Patrick's GA pitch. And in terms of what's required are we talking a 5k or a 10k or how how physically able do people have to be to take part in it? Max 5k. Um, the different communities are just finalising their routes at the minute. So sometimes they're three kilometres, sometimes they're five kilometres. It really depends on the route in that community. And they really, if there's somebody that feels the distance is too far for them, they can turn at any point. The idea of the Operation Transformation Walks is that we want to make it accessible for everybody. So there'll be absolutely nobody sh- um, turned away if they feel like they won't be able to complete the full walk. We'll be able to work with them and turn around at a certain point. So the the walks are about five kilometres, but um, the, the routes are just being finalised at the minute. And really just a case of people getting out and getting active and participating. Yeah, and getting out in their community and getting the feel good after they do their exercise, meeting with people, enjoying themselves. These walks will be a big social thing. We're hoping to have a cup of tea and a light piece of fruit or something at the end of the walk. So there won't be any onus on anybody to be sweating or doing a real hard workout. Get out, make the first start and just get moving would be the first step for everybody. In terms of start times, you've mentioned locations already. Start times all the same time? Um, on Saturday the 18th, they'll all start at 11am, but we'll have registration from about half 10. So if anybody wants to come early and get a high vis or meet people they're more than welcome to we in other years we've had people with buggies and that kind of thing come and get ready so people are more than welcome to come from kind of half 10 quarter to 11 and we have registration sheet um, but the walks will all start at 11 a.m on saturday the 18th of january and at 1 p.m on sunday the 19th in drum and i know it's a bone of contention for some people dogs allowed or not allowed oh yeah dogs are allowed yeah one per lead ideally we don't want to see somebody coming with 15 <laughs> dogs being dragged along the road yeah but no dogs are welcome yeah perfect course. yeah what else is going on because I know you have a lot of stuff popping up on social media at the moment with safeguarding courses coaching courses tell us what you're you're up to at the moment yeah um the swim for all programs that's a swimming program for young children with disabilities uh starting on Monday the 27th of January in Aura Leisure and we ran this program I think two or three years at this stage so the the more we run it the more children we're getting engaged and enjoying it and gaining skills from the program and moving on to maybe the special olympics or moving on to other swimming lessons um but the swim fall program will be up and running again at the end of january and if people want to take part in that they're more than welcome to get in contact with us we also have um our safeguarding courses are starting up again at the end of february so safeguarding one is for all coaches, anybody working with children in sport. So that's on Thursday, the 27th of February, 7 pm to 10 pm. And we also have Safeguarding 2, which is for your club children's officer. It's also probably not a bad idea for parents whose kids are involved in sport to have that qualification yeah. as well. It's only a, it's a couple of hours. And the Safeguarding 1, yeah, it would be, it's a three hour course. And I would encourage all parents who have children involved in, in sports to help out with whatever sport. That is, be it be a water girl or a water parent at the sideline or a ball carrier. Uh, I often hear parents say to me, oh, I wouldn't have any experience with basketball or athletics or swimming. And they feel out of their depth to get involved. But I can tell you (laughs) from (laughs) From my experience, experience, yeah, coaches would be very happy to have any parent help them carry balls, help them set up cones, help them book a bus if they have to transport children, help them wash jerseys. The, Even just the, the text co- messages to parents and that sort of stuff. Exactly, yeah. Help on WhatsApp groups um, and to the first step for parents to help out with any course or any um, sports club would be to take part in Safeguard 1 because they'll, they'll be given all the information on uh, children ratios. If a child comes to you with a problem, what you can deal with, do with that to deal with a child's problem. So um, I'd encourage every parent and it's good information for the parents to have to know what the children are being involved in as well and it, it helps them and encourage their child for the child to know m- my parents are proud of me and they want me to be involved and they're, they're showing a 
an interest in me doing well so yeah and I think it's important as well in the terms of because some clubs might not realize how important that is but all clubs should be every single person involved whether they're on the committee or coaching yeah they should have at the very minimum a safeguarding one yeah yeah exactly yeah everybody involved with children in sport which should have safeguarding one relatively cheap to get that qualification it's 15 euro per person it's it's a price of a couple of points exactly put put your children's safety Mm -hmm. in the where it should be and and prioritize it yeah exactly Uh, is there much space on that course yes there's lots of space on it Perfect. Yeah. So what day is that again, just to remind people? So the safeguarding one for everybody involved with children in sport, that's the safeguarding one course is on Thursday, the 27th of February, 7pm to 10pm here in Carrick and Shannon in the Leitrim County Council offices. And as I said, it costs 15 euro and people are more than welcome to sign up to that. I'll give you my details at the end because I don't want them. No problem. Don't do them every single time. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that's safeguard one. We also have safeguarding two, which is for the club children's officer and safeguarding three, which is for your designated liaison person. They are happening in March and April and therefore the club children's officer the designated liaison person so in each club there is generally only one children's club children's officer and one je- designated liaison person so they're not as um, I suppose broadly advertised because they're they're going to specific committee members but um, the safeguarding one is for everybody every coach working with uh, children in sport. Excellent. We also have Sports First Aid with CPR on Saturday the 29th of February in the Leitrim County Council offices from half nine until 4pm and that course costs €20 euro per person so that's basic first aid and it's open to everybody so again anybody working with children in sport if they're a coach or any um, role with children in sport it's, it's a very good uh, course and qualification to have so it's just a one day from half nine until four o'clock and again that course is open and we have lots of space on it if anybody would like to sign up it costs 20 euro per person and we also have the autism in sport workshop on sunday the 16th of february and that's only from 11 a.m to 2 p.m and it'll be in the gale school Leitrima, and it costs 20 euro per person so that gives parents or coaches or um special needs assistance more information on how to engage children with autism in sport and the different methods that might work best for children with autism every child is different so it'll really depend but it's a good course and it's good to increase people's knowledge excellent i also noticed uh, there's a gaelic ladies gaelic football coaching course yeah uh, you're involved in that or at least you're promoting that on their behalf yes yes so the Leitrim Ladies County Board and we've been working with Leitrim Ladies County Board to help them organise the level one um, coaching course and that's start. it's a two day course and it's starting the end of January if my memory serves right I don't have it on the piece of paper here but it's a two day course you have to have completed the foundation coaching course but Ladies Gaelic is on the up in the county and the more people that can get trained up and help out coaching they'll always be happy to have more people so if anyone would like to get involved in that we'd be glad to have them as well you lined out for Leitrim Ladies last year yourself are you yeah. back this year? I haven't been back no <laughs> <laughs> no that's a worry no um, just, have you anything else you want to get in? Um I'll also mention that the Sports Hall Athletics um, competition, which we run every year with the primary schools, is starting up in February. So we have three heats in that Sports Hall Athletic competition. And I know a lot of the schools do be busy training this time of the year um, for the competition. There does be high competition at it. And we that's open to all primary schools in Leitrim. And there will be a county final at the end of it all. And there's national competitions at the end of March when all our local competitions are finished. So that's one of our uh, next big pieces of work. And um, we also have lots of other programs running for example girls active sports leadership exuberant kayla and loads of disability programs with different groups throughout the county so that they're they're happening but they're kind of enclosed in in within those groups. yeah they're all those. happening behind the scenes <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah well listen thank you so much for coming in it yeah. sounds like an absolutely hectic couple of weeks yeah. uh, people can find all this information on our website which is leitrim www.leitrimsports.ie or they can contact us on 071-96504 or email sports at leitrimcoco.ie I suppose if they just Google Leitrim Sports Partnership they'll find all that yeah, information Yeah, hopefully so. it's, it's easy to access <laughs> us. <laughs> no problem. Listen, Trish, thanks very much for popping in Thank and you. the very best luck for the year ahead. And that, folks, is all we have time for today. Thank you very much to my guests, to Gary, Thomas MacDonald, and also to Patricia Ford for coming in. Don't forget to make your nominations for our Athlete of the Month competition, and hopefully your nominee will be the end of the month recipient of that particular award. 
Thank you very much for listening today. It has been the Sports Preview Show, and I'll be back tomorrow with a current affair where I sit down with the Cahirlick of Leitrim County Council and his fellow councillor, former Cahirlick of Leitrim County Council, Mary Bohan and obviously Enda McGloin to talk about a number of things that are going on in the county at the moment, as well as maybe a look forward to an upcoming general election. Talk to you then.